Let me show you how to save thousands of dollars on your photo shoots and supercharge your creativity with Mid Journey AI. Hello my friends, how are you doing? My name is Olivio, I'm a professional artist. Let's get started. So first let's talk about the use case here. You are a very ambitious photographer and want to make the most amazing art. But you can't do 3D art, you can't do 3D printing or airbrushing, building props, putting on makeup rent a studio, all of that stuff takes a lot of time, takes a lot of money, takes a good team, or you can use Mid Journey AI to create hundreds of variations of your ideas and combine it with the photos of the model. So today I will show you in Affinity Photo, which is a very affordable competition to Photoshop, how to combine your Mid Journey creation with actual photos from your shoot. So in this case, I had the worst situation ever. The model was overworked, didn't have time, was super tired and we had to shoot in a couple of minutes. So I took some of these photos in my kitchen right there you can see one with the eyes very wide open one with the eyes closed and that's it. And we will use this to create amazing art today. So here is how I do this. We have this really cool piece here. I want to replace the face. Here is something you need to know. When you combine an actual photo with digital art, the way our eyes and brain works is that the eyes are attracted to the face. They see a lot of detail. So the brain assumes the rest of the picture also has a lot of detail and everything looks much better because of this. This is a trick that classic painters use so they don't have to work for hours on little details. They just painted the face and the hands, the parts where you usually look very detailed and the rest is just brushed in there with a lot less detail. Next time you visit a museum, check that out. So here's how this works. I have my image layer. You can see in brackets it still says image, it needs to say pixel. So I right click on that layer and I rasterize that and after I've done this, I will make a selection roughly with a rectangle over the face like so and copy just the face to a new layer. So control C to copy, control V to put it on a new layer, control D to deselect. Now I can delete the original layer. We don't need that anymore. If you want to get amazing results like these, check out my next video about mid journey hacks and how to get the best results in no time. Next step, I reduce the opacity of that layer and I will adjust it so it is over the face and has roughly the same size like this for example. You see I have set it to around 50 to 60 percent so I can see both layers at the same time and I can adjust them until I'm satisfied. You can see here the nose, the eyebrows, the lips, they are roughly at the same position. Bring the opacity back to 100% and now the next step is that I will create a mask down here. This is applied to the layer and with this I can simply take my paintbrush. I will set this to a nice big size and then set it to the color black and I can simply paint out all of the stuff that I don't need. Now in this case, because the face is head on and I want to merge them together in a very natural way, I'm going to use the outline of the face from Mind Journey and combine it with the actual face. So let's make my brush a little bit smaller. The way I do this is I hold Control and Alt at the same time and then I'm click and dragging my mouse left to right and this is adjusting my brush size. So you can see here, I can paint this in here. Let's make this a little bit bigger so it's really soft and try to blend this together like so. And then afterwards, because this is a mask, this is non-destructive, we can still go back and readjust this. You can see there is this kind of detail up here. I want to have that on the face too. So far, already looks pretty good. So next step, what we need to do here is to do some adjustments to the color and also to the brightness. So first of all, let's create an adjustment layer for vibrance. 
I will drag this onto my face layer so that this is then only applied to the face. Let's reduce the vibrance and the saturation of that. Already this looks closer to the face in the background. Then next step, create a curves adjustment. Also drag this down here so it will be a child layer and then push up here the brightness until this mixes better. Let's see, that is pretty good already. And then we can go here to the color layers, adjust this a little bit, maybe like this. And then also with the blue, like that maybe, that looks okay, that looks pretty good. And then we can also go in here and create a color balance adjustment. Again, drag it on so it is a child layer and we can play around with this too until we feel like the two colors of the faces are mixing better. So already I feel like that looks pretty good. Now I want to go back here and see where I want to place my face. Maybe we move this a little bit more to the left like so, so it's more in the center of the face. And if you say, well, the details of the face are a little bit smaller than they should be, everything about this portrait is a little bit eerie, is a little bit strange. So I'm aware that the face shape is not completely natural, but this is what I want to have in here because it makes everything more strange and that fits through also the autonomy of the body where the neck is way too long and the other details. Everything is strange about that and that is good. So that is good as it is. So let's go in here and you can see that I'm using now white. So I can paint some of these details back in here from the original face. Let's see how we can combine this in a way that fits well like so okay up here we can blend this maybe a little bit softer there we go what do we have over here this is part of the other face let's see and this is the end of the face already so that means i have to hide these hair details we can see here of course this shouldn't happen so let's hide this and then blend it softly over here like so, blend, 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 blend. There we go. Here's a detail that I don't like. So let's make a new pixel layer here. And then I'm going to use my in-paint brush for that. I'm setting it to current layers and below. And now I can simply paint over this part here and hopefully, yeah, there we go. Remove it just like that. Affinity Photo has done an awesome job with this. Very nice. We can clean up the face a little bit here for all of these impurities. The original face of the Mind Journey artwork also has some impurities on the skin, but I want to remove these a little bit here. There we go. Also up here. You see I'm just clicking on it. It's super fast. It's super easy. And there we go. So that's already pretty good. I want to adjust the colors here a little bit more. Leave it like this. And then also over here we have some details. Let's see what that is. Ah, okay. This is from the original artwork. I see, I see. So what we could do here is maybe we stretch the face a little bit. Let's see, like that. Then we have to clean up some stuff up here now. Nope, that was the wrong direction. Let's go the other way. And then go up here again with our in-paint brush and just remove this part here. Very nice. So things are starting to come together pretty nicely. Let's create here another layer and go here with the in-paint brush to fix this part a little bit because that's a bit strange. Let's see if the software can do it, kind of. Let's take a brush here with black color 
and just paint a little bit over this. Make the opacity a little bit lower. So we will just darken this a little bit out. And then we can erase this over here so this part here stays more bright. And then another thing we need to do here is to make another layer. And for this, we are going to do a little bit of dodge and burn here. So with that, I'm setting this to the blend mode soft light. And let's make this bigger here. Open this up and then I can use my gray values here to darken some parts of that image. Let's see. That should work. The opacity needs to be a little bit higher. And so now I can darken this side of the face a little bit. All right, and then I need to use my erase brush here to erase it from the parts, of course, that are not the face, like so. Let's see. Capture it a little bit down here. So here are some extra steps I want to do. I'm going to create a unsharpened mask and push up the radius to get me some more details in here. As you can see, this will create some more sharpness, but also texture in here. That's pretty helpful. And then another thing I can do is that I can create in here an adjustment for brightness and contrast. I will push up the contrast like that and then invert the layer. And now I will use my paintbrush on here to paint this contrast only where I want to have it. So I want to have this a little bit more here on my eyebrows and then also here on the lashes down here a little bit. So these have a bit more detail. And then here's another trick for a bit of digital makeup. We are using our freehand selection tool and we are going on the outside of the lips. I'm setting feather up to seven pixels here. Let's go here like so. As you see on the outside of the lips, it's pretty important like so. Then go in here, around here, and then again around the outside of the lips like that. There we go. And then here's the trick. You go to adjustment and to gradient map like so, control D to deselect. Now set the left side to black as a color. Let's switch here to the color wheel, black. The right side you set to white and then the middle to anything you want. Of course, this is too much. We only want to have a little bit of lipstick on here, a little bit of pink lips. There we go. Turn it on and off. You can see now the lips are a little bit darker and they have a little bit more color. And just like that, we have turned this from a kind of messed up mid journey render to an amazing portrait photo. Thank you very much for watching and see you soon.